Hey all, I've been wanting to do a micro DLG project for a while, especially after watching a lot of YouTubers like Wind and Wings and Marco Roulade make DLGs from scratch. Uh, I like the concept of not having to have a motor and having to power it with a larger battery and so that I can get longer flight times out of the field just from chucking it. So I started working on this small 70cm uh, wingspan DLG after Chris from iForce 2D introduced me to OpenVSP. I wanted to start a project that used OpenVSP because all I was used to before was XFLR5 and the DLG seemed like a pretty uh, straightforward project to attempt with OpenVSP since I don't have to worry about motors or uh, any complex coupling between multiple control surfaces and the prop wash from the propellers. Uh, plus design for DLG seems to be a lot more streamlined uh, with less complex uh, mold lines around the fuselage like you'd expect with a larger plane or one that has extra features like landing gear or flaps or other uh, other features like that. So I started off by uh, thinking about the size I wanted for the DLG and I knew I wanted it to be fairly small so that I could keep everything attached as a single piece and even with it all attached still be pretty small so it's easy to transport in my car. So I went with a 70 centimeter wingspan with 8 degrees dihedral and then the fuselage pod is pretty straightforward design along with a carbon fiber tail boom that connects to the tail surfaces. For the vertical and horizontal stabilizer I went with a pretty standard approach for uh, what I've seen on other DLGs. Although compared to the open VSP model here I ended up having to extend the actual control surface on the rudder a bit more. Uh, it was stable enough when I was throwing it but I didn't have a whole lot of control authority. So I ended up having to increase the surface area of that so I could actually steer better. Uh, the nice thing about OpenVSP compared to XFLR5 is you have a lot more control over the panel construction and the actual shape of the models you're adding. And that helps play a large role when you actually run the simulations uh, using the panel method. So as an example of that, you uh, compared to XFLR5, you can get a lot more information uh, like load distribution and all the relative aerodynamic parameters that can be pretty difficult to get out of XFLR5 unless you're really familiar with how to get those parameters out. So after I was happy with the design here, I started uh, catting it up in Fusion so I could make molds. Um, and this is where one of the first mistakes from the initial model was from. Uh, if you notice, the actual fuselage here is quite a bit smaller than the open VSP model. And that's because after I picked out the servos I was going to use, I ended up downsizing the fuselage to just barely fit the servos inside. And that was to try to save on weight to make it as light as possible. And uh, part of downsizing this is that in the final model, the tail actually had to be extended. So I ended up keeping the same relative distance from the tail control surfaces to the main wing, but the neck of the tail spar had to come forward somewhat so that the nose was pretty much the same same distance. The tip of the nose was the same distance from the tail surfaces as it originally was in the open VSP model. Um, and I mainly did that so I wouldn't have to use lead ballast, but after this design crashed for the first time, I ended up just ordering lead ballast anyways and going with the original open VSP model. So I'll show some footage of constructing this model and then the few flight attempts I had of it. Overall, the construction of the plane is pretty straightforward. I used a lot of 3D printed molds for all the pieces and four ounce plane weave car uh, fiberglass uh, for the first go around at this plane. All of the wing surfaces, I also included a uh, plug made out of foam that I wire cut on my CNC wire cutter. I also started using toilet paper to help wick up excess epoxy when I'm doing composite work. I've seen a lot of people do this online on YouTube 
and it seems to work really well, especially if I don't have any uh, peel ply that I can use to help wick uh, the epoxy. Since all of the wing sections have quite a bit of curvature in them, I ended up using the STL portion of my wire slicer software to cut out the wings instead of planting them as actual wings. Uh, this was pretty straightforward since you just export the wing as an STL and then import it into the wire slicer software. I did the hatch for the DLG as a separate part so that I can embed it into the mold for the fuselage and that ends up leaving a lip that the hatch fits pretty snugly onto. So I did both the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer a little bit differently from one another. The vertical stabilizer, I did the composite work first and then had it set in a vacuum bag so that the skin uh, set pretty, pretty tightly to the mold. And then in this portion of the video, I'm putting the plug in after the fact with epoxy to set it. But for the horizontal stabilizer, I'm doing the mold and the plug all in one go. So I'm setting the epoxy into the mold and then putting the plug in and letting it all set as a single piece with uh, the mold being clamped together with bolts. Um, I'm trying these two separate methods before doing the primary wing to see which one I like better. But I ended up going with the way I did the horizontal stabilizer because the, the fit of the composite against the plug was actually a lot better than letting it set first. So I've seen a lot of people, instead of using vacuum bags when doing DLG fuselage molds, uh, they'll put a balloon on the inside of the mold to push the composite up against the outside of the mold. So I ended up trying to do that with this piece as well. I got some balloons that are used to make balloon animals off Amazon and put it in the mold and tried to inflate it to help apply pressure to the composite and have it set as a single piece. TLDR for trying to use the balloon is that it uh, didn't work at all. Uh, it all inflated outside of the mold and there is actually no, no air got into the balloon inside of the mold so it didn't help set the set the composite at all. So I ended up having to just redo the entire part and when I redid it I did each half as two separate pieces and then glued them together after the fact and it ended up making a pretty strong part. So here's the fuselage and tail all put together. Uh, I used 1.9 gram servos, uh, just two channel setup, so only the elevator and the rudder. And I'm using a pull-pull system to connect them to the control surfaces. 
The primary wing also had quite a bit of curvature in it as well, so this also got cut using cross sections. I ended up using the mold to help align all the pieces while gluing and then I had to sand it down afterwards to take off the excess from the cuts. In the past I've had a lot of issues doing uh, the leading edges when I'm uh, fiberglassing or putting any sort of composite layup on wings. And I've seen in a lot of other DLG videos on YouTube that people will use 3M to help uh, keep the fabric from fraying but also to put a strip on the leading edge. And this helps a lot because the fabric you put on the top and bottom surface of the wing can adhere to the leading edge uh, strip as well. And then if you have any bubbling on the leading edge from the fabric on top and bottom you can sand it down to the leading edge while still having a good bond between the fabric on top and bottom and the leading edge strip. So uh, I ended up doing that with these wing surfaces, although I didn't put enough 3M on the left wing half, uh, that strip ended up fraying and coming off a lot. So you'll see in some of the photos and clips further on in the video that the left wing half is quite a bit worse than the right in terms of the layup quality and the way it looks. So I printed all eight pieces of the wing mold in a single print and I didn't notice that I forgot to include the bolt holes until it was already about two days into the print. So I'm just using a wooden plank and some weights to help uh, supply pressure to the mold while the epoxy sets.
used some super glue to help tack the wing onto the tail spar here and then went back in later and filled the gap in between with epoxy. I uh, didn't use any filler like glass microspheres or chopped, ca chopped carbon because I didn't have any on hand, but the epoxy held pretty well. So the part that failed uh, during the launch was right in front of where the tail spar terminated on the fuselage. All the fiberglass right there actually crumpled to the side and it gave way. This is a pretty easy fix and for the, the redesign I ended up including a lot more surface area where the tail spar mates to the fuselage and then also including uh, better reinforcement going from the tail up to the front of the fuselage so it can support more weight. The video is starting to get a bit long here so I think I'll have the footage of the rebuild and subsequent flights in a part two. Uh, there's quite a bit of footage of rebuilding this fuselage because I ended up changing a few ways of how I constructed it to get a better get a better mold and then also how I joined the wing to it to help support more of the force when you do the discus launch. So I uh, I have all the footage for that and I'll start editing it soon to post a follow-up video. Thanks for watching everyone.